Boeing at 30 feet. That was out of the airport, 20 miles from town. It's in the 60 degree range this afternoon, upper 50s, I would imagine. And we have a game what should be another great ball game between two great teams. The Detroit Tigers, who are down in the American League Championship Series, no games to do. And the Oakland A's, who won the first two games. But the first two are worth nothing if you don't win that third. And the A's have got three chances now to win the third game, which would send them in to the World Series against the National League champion. That sets the stage. Our broadcasting partners, Jim Woods and Jimmy Pearsall, will be back very shortly with a starting lineup for today's game and for some more stage-setting information. We'll be back in 60 seconds with the start of today's game. American Forces Radio in the Canal Zone. This is SCN, 790 and 1420. Cincinnati, Ohio. That game will be underway when this game is very close to its conclusion somewhere in the last three innings of play. And uh, when that game gets underway, we will keep you up to date on just what is going on at Cincinnati. We'll keep you up to date inning by inning summary. And then when this game between Oakland and Detroit is concluded, we will switch directly to Cincinnati for the broadcast of the remainder of the game between the Pirates and the Reds. This is a situation not only confronting radio, but also national television on NBC. They will follow the same procedure today and, if necessary, tomorrow. Well, this is a big day for the Oakland A's because uh, they have had years of frustration trying to get to the World Series. As you know, last year they were blanked in three straight by the Baltimore Orioles on their way to a date with Pittsburgh. And this year, Oakland would like to do the same thing to the Tigers and hopefully go on to meet either Pittsburgh or Cincinnati. It matters not to them. Well, we were just down on the field for about a couple of hours watching these two teams take batting practice, talking with them, watching them in reactions. And I would have to say that of all the games played so far, I see more players, more tempt up than in any game of the playoff series, including number one out in Oakland. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of difference it's going to make. Ordinarily, when you see two teams this tight, you see a very fine ball game because most athletes will tell you and performers will tell you, if you're not a little tense up on the inside, you're not worthy of a performance of a professional. Let's find out the opinions of two guys who are real pros, too. Our broadcasting partner, Jim Woods and Jimmy Thurston. Thank you very much, Bonnie. And, uh, Jimmy, the umpires are coming out. We're going to have to go into the starting lineup for a moment. Uh, just want to say that uh, I think Billy Martin has stacked the deck here on Kenny Oates for the day. He's got free hand back and everything else going on for him. He's going to stack the deck all right. He'll try anything to win this ball game. And certainly uh, Kenny Oates has got his work cut out for him. He's had his problems against this ball club. He's got an ERA of over five against him. But uh, I think he's up to the occasion. And I certainly know our ball club is ready to go. We'll be back with the starting lineup uh, right after station identification on the Oakland A's Arco Radio Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. At 790 and 1420 in the Canal Zone, this is SCN Radio, an affiliate of the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Before the 
Dan than they were the other two in uh, in Oakland against this club. I don't think so. I don't think there was a chance. I, I, I think they're quiet. I think they don't know what to expect from the fans. I think they know what to expect from the opposition. They know what type of pitcher that Coleman is. They know he isn't a gutty pitcher. He's not the kind of a pitcher that goes out there and attacks it. He's got good stuff, but he has a tendency to uh, to uh, aim the ball. He has a tendency to try to pitch differently than he does when he's not under pressure. So they are uh, throwing this, and they feel they can beat this guy. And I certainly think they can too. Is a fine football. There are not uh, too many people outside of an Elroy face that Joe Page and two or three more you can mention have, a, have that delivery. Yes, and today with the pressure, and of course the mound isn't as high anymore, Jim, and that fourth ball does not do as much as it used to when the mound was higher. That was a great pitch for a pitcher that was picking off a high mound. Right now, it doesn't have a chance to get down as quick. So uh, I don't fear that, that uh, pitch in this ballpark, especially if he hangs it just a little bit above the knees or with a lot of air. Well, the Tigers have to go all out here today. There for them is go tomorrow, as there is no tomorrow for the Cincinnati Reds either today against the Pittsburgh Pirates, as they will start their game a little bit after this one. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the crowd here at Tiger Stadium is standing for the plane of our national anthem.
on the right hand. That's the throwing hand. So we've been watching him very carefully here all afternoon. And he has been throwing well before the game. He hit a ball or two in the seats in batting practice. So Big Bill, who has been a throwing on the side of the A's all year long, is ready to go for the Detroit Tigers. And as Jim mentioned, they stacked the deck with right-handed hitters for Detroit today. Joe Coleman, who has beaten the Oakland A's twice this year, is out of the mound to pitch to Matt Hillou. And Matty is ready to start rolling. Hitting 281 for the Oakland A's over the year and for the A's and the Cardinals. And there's a drive out of the corner. Right field It's going to go all the way to the corner. Matty takes the turn around first. He's on his way to second. They may get him. The throw is there. He is waiting. He makes it. It's a double for Matty Alou. The very first pitch of the ball game. He got that Coleman pitch right up in his eyes and drilled it to the corner. And this is not an easy part to get a double in down the line, Jimmy. It caromed off the uh, facade there. It didn't go to the fence. And uh, Matty was watching the ball and made a very bad turn around first base. He was way out towards right field. And certainly, uh, k with his great arm, almost got him. I think a throw close to the bag might have been tough for Matty. But Matty hit that ball right on the nose. Now here's Al Maxfield who's playing shortstop in the absence of Kathy Campanera. The A's really want to get on that scoreboard here in the very first inning. What Maxi does might dictate whether they do. Here's the pitch. He takes it low and outside, ball one. Matty Ellu. In the leadoff spot today because the A's little roadrunner, Campy Campaneras, was suspended for the rest of the playoffs by American League President Joe Cronin. But Matty's a good leadoff man, and Dal Maxfield is a good number two hitter and an excellent shortstop. I don't know just exactly how nervous the players were today, but did you ever put underarm spray on and find out that it was hairspray? <laughs> Here's the pitch. Matty off second a little ways. The pitch is outside for a ball at 2-0. And, and I'm throwing out my lineup card. I put the A's in the home lineup position today. You're not nervous, are you? Glad I'm not hitting. <laughs> Two balls and no strikes to count. Now Maxville. What a job he's done for the A's. His biggest hit of his entire major league career, he said, was on the day the A's clinched the penalty. Knocked in Sal Bando with a double to left center field. Here's a pitch to him. Swing and a fly ball foul out of play along the right field line. Maxie got one up and in that time. He's trying to go to right with it. Looks like uh, Skipper Williams is giving him a shot. I think that's the shot he got. He might be running right here. I think they wanted to give him one chance to hit it through that infield. Well, the Tigers really set up in right center field for Maxville. If he hits one here where he hit in the playoffs or in the regular season, it would go to the wall 400 feet away because Stanley is playing very shallow and way over in right field from center. Two balls, one strike to Dow Maxville. Here's the pitch. He squares around. He bumps the ball, but it goes foul. So now the count is gone with two balls and two strikes. So Maxfield took one shot to right. He then tried to bump the ball. He got a good ball to bump that time. He just got on top of it a little bit. Rodriguez, the third baseman, was not coming in on that play. The pitcher's job is to cover the line here. Now the third baseman will loosen up. The first baseman drops back. and his first major league victory ever was against the Oakland days. Drops down to the stretch. He takes his foot off the rubber as he looks back at second base. And it is bright sunshine now here in Detroit. Nobody down. Here's the pitch. Maxie takes low and outside. Ball three. With the lead that Matty's taking right now, I wouldn't be surprised to see that play put on because I know that Taylor is edging over a little bit more each time and Matty has got an awfully big lead at second base. They had McCall trying to sneak in behind him just a minute ago. Joe Coleman, probably a bit nervous himself right here, working three balls, two strikes to Dow Maxville with Joe Rudy on deck. Now here's the pitch. Low and outside, he walks him. Now there's two on for Joe Rudy. One of the league's top hitters all year long. Rudy hit 19 home runs for the Oakland A's this year and batted 308 in the playoffs so far in the two games. Rudy's batting 286. He's had two hits and seven at bats. He knocked in two runs for the A's. And right away, the Tiger bullpen gets up and goes to work. John Hiller, number 18 left hander, is up throwing. Now, let's see if Dick Williams goes to the punt or has Rudy swinging away here in the top of the first with two on and nobody out. Reggie Jackson on deck. Joe Coleman. 
Coleman. Ready, throwing. Rudy squares around the bunt, doesn't take the strike. Ike Brown, the first baseman, was charging. The third baseman ran back. If he does bunt, he wants to bunt into the third baseman and make him field it. And unless the Tigers have on the play that they put on over in Oakland, then it would move the runners up. McCall does not have the speed. I would doubt very much if they put the play on. They might, but I don't think so. One strike count. Here's the pitch. Rudy squares around, bumps the ball down the third base side. It's going to go foul. He picked a high curveball about that time, and man, that's the kind he could hit out of the ballpark. Also, a pretty good pitch to Bunch Daly, and I don't think Joe was expecting it. And the first pitch was a pitch that he, I think, wasn't looking for. It was a low fastball and a good pitch to Bunch because you don't want the ball up above your waist. Now, Rudy, another of the A's good bunners ordinarily, taken one pitch, pointed at the other, and fouled it off. And now it's a two strike count, and the defense will loosen up, hoping for a ground ball they could turn into a double play. psychologically to get off in the first inning with some runs in a big game like this. Matty Alou at second base. Dow Maxville at first. Here's the pitch. Rudy takes outside a sidearm curveball. Coleman throws a lot of sidearm pitches. Rudy's job here is to guard that plate. Long-time veteran, all-star catcher for the Tigers, many years older. Here's the sign, here's the pitch. Rudy takes a sidearm curve, all strike three. Joe Rudy, one of the A's most reliable, is called out on strike a mighty, mighty big out it was for Coleman. The runners are still there, and here is Reggie Jackson. like to see Coleman throw that sidearm curveball at Jackson or at Epstein. He has a tendency to do it. I watched him on television in a big game, and he has uh, a liking for that pitch. It's not a good pitch. Jackson has had three hits in the series. In the two games, he's been up nine times. One of his hits knocked in a couple of runs Sunday in Oakland. He hits the biggest home run he's ever hit in his career right here in this ballpark in the All-Star game to help the American League win, and it was one of the longest he or anybody else ever hit. Now he would settle for one just over the wall. It wouldn't have to be for that distance. Here's the pitch. High, a fastball, one and all. Oh. Ricky's got to get his pitch too right now. He's got Coleman in a hole. He's got to work good. If he's playing any of his bad pitches, he's going to only hurt himself. So he's got to hit strikes. Big factor when Joe Rudy takes the call third strike in this ballpark because he can hit it out of this park anywhere. So Jackson or Epstein's going to have to try to pick him up now. Here's the pitch. High foul, ball out of play. It's one ball and one strike. The Oakland A's and Detroit Tigers. Tigers Stadium in Detroit. A trip to the World Series and a very fat check financially awaits the winner of this series. And Joe Coleman is pitching right now in a very, very crucial situation. If he can get out of this half inning, Without runs being scored against him, it will be a big lift for the Tigers. There are two on. Alou and Maxville. Here's the pitch. Jackson fouls it upstairs. It's one ball, two strikes. This park is built with a 340-foot left field line and a 325-foot right field line. And 325 is not very far for power hitters. Al Keyline has a fence almost right at his back. He's up on the top of that dugout. He's really moving those infielders around. He's right on top of the whole play. Coleman is ahead of Jackson now at one and two. He can afford to waste a picture throw here. He's at the waist. He's holding, steps off the rubber, and Matty Lou walks back over towards second base. One ball, two strikes to Reggie Jackson. Now Coleman gets ready. Here's the pitch. Low and inside. A nice backhanded stop by Bill Freehand. So the count goes to two balls, two strikes.
going to have to throw him his best pitch right here. Looks like he's trying to throw the curveball too hard. He's reaching back and throwing as hard as he can. His fastball is clearly going away from Jackson. It looks like his best pitch right now. Well, that's the one he started him off with. And the one he pitched to him with, with a count of one and one. It is full now. Another bad one with loads of bases. And if he hangs one, he could unload them in a hurry. Here's the pitch. Runner's going, clean and miss, strike three, and a lose. Plays the third, he steals third base. The Oakland A's in quite a gamble. Started both runners that time. Matty Alou steals third, Max steals second, and what that does is leave first base open now, and they may not pitch to Mike Epstein. The throw was to the right of the base, and he had a reach for it, Rodriguez, and if he did, a good slide by Alou away from him, and no doubt the umpire right on top of the play, and that one bit of uh, protest by Rodriguez, so you know the play was uh, in our favor. Now they're having a conference on that mound, and Billy Martin's going to join them. They're trying to make up their mind whether or not to pitch to Mike Epstein. They've been pitching around him in the entire series. Boy, Coleman has gotten two of the A's. Big toes here in the first inning on strikeout with two men on to start the inning. Rudy on a call strike and Jackson. Looks like he threw him a hard curveball. The inside part of the plate wrapped it right around his waist. Epstein for this series. is batting 333. He's had two hits and six at bat. They've walked him three times. But Mike has did awfully well against Detroit all year long. He's the A's leading home run here with 26 for the season. Now Bando is on deck. And it's a matter of whether or not they want to pick the Epstein or Bando. Freehand is down in a catching position. So they might pitch to him, but I would imagine they'll pitch very, very carefully. A hit could score two runs. Alou at third. Maxville at second. Off the stretch, the pitch. He dropped the curveball in there, right at the knees. They're going to pitch to him, it looks like. Mike Epstein takes more pitches, probably, than any other power hitter around. He's up there looking for what he wants. That was a curveball exploded. It was nothing like still a tough pitch. And it was down. Here's the pitch. High pop-up off third base near the stand, and it's going to be out of play. Pick up. No balls, two strikes to Epstein. Matty Alou doing the kind of a thing that Campanaris might have been doing. Stealing third. But the runners were going with Jackson Batting. You never know if Matty was on his own or whether they had to play on. Now Coleman is ahead of Epstein at 0 2. Alou comes down the line at third. Coleman could be off the windup. He's off the stretch. He throws a curve. Cut. Miss. Ball one. Wow, that was close. He's got a good fork ball also, besides the curve. It goes down and away from the left-handed bat. I wouldn't think he'd pull out that fork ball right now. He don't want to make a mistake. But he's got the good curve and the good fastball ball for him right now. Two strikes to count on the batter. This place could explode if he gets that thing. They're way around to the right for Mike. Here's the pitch. Way outside, that curve got away from him. Hit two balls, two strikes. Boy, he's been in some trouble. He walked Maxville, but he was ahead of Rudy all the way. He didn't throw him a ball. Then he got to a 3-2 count on Jackson and struck him out. Two and two count. Coleman pitches. That's seen. Swings and misses. He struck him out. Well, you recall at the outset of the broadcast, we uh, said that they expected 54,000 fans at Tiger Stadium, which would be right at or above capacity, but uh, it's a rather disappointing crowd. But you must keep one thing in mind. This is the middle of the week, and it is a work day in the greater Detroit area, the automotive capital of America, and uh, many people probably uh, figuring two points. Uh, why take a day off from work? And B, if I can get off, and also their chances of seeing the Tigers win the playoffs right now are a little on the slim side. 
But uh, it is surprising because Detroit is a great baseball town. It is a great sports town. And uh, not to see at least near capacity or capacity is somewhat of a surprise. But also feeds ammunition to the plan this year that the World Series middle three games from now on, the games that are played during the week, will be night games from here on in. And that's the way it's going to be because people in the daytime during working hours during the workday week cannot get out to the ballpark. So baseball is going along with the theory that if you play at night, you can get the fans and they probably will. Nothing, nothing. 
As you know, now that this game is underway, manager Dick Williams of the A's is using the veteran shortstop Dow Maxville, who is a slick fielder, often stabbed the worst hitter in the big leagues. But even uh, in his playing days at St. Louis with the Cardinals, he occasionally, like Marty Marion of past years, used to come up with that big clutch hit, and usually for extra bases. But uh, during his career, Maxville never really scared anyone at the plate. The Tigers, of course, are also going with a substituted shortstop, Dick McAuliffe, for the second day running. It was disclosed earlier today that regular shortstop Eddie Brinkman is suffering from a ruptured spinal disc or a slip disc and will undergo an operation at Detroit Ford Hospital on Friday. That's a real tough blow for the Tigers because he and Rodriguez on the left side of that infield really uh, shut off any ground ball attack that the Oakland A's can muster, and that's a big hole. But Maxville is a fine fielder. Maybe at this age does not have the range that Brinkman has, but uh, he can do the job in the clutch. But no doubt Brinkman will be missed. Well, Joe Coleman, who was in a lot of trouble in the very first inning, starts into the second against Val Bando, Gene Tennis, and Dick Green. The A's have right-handed hitters their own in Atlanta here this afternoon. Jackson and Epstein This is SCN Radio, 790 and 1420 in the Canal Zone. Now with one out and one on in the second inning, Dick Green is going to bat. I think probably if we would have had another man on there, 
Green would have gone out for the pinch hitter. Dick played very little for the A's this year, only 25 ball games. He batted 286 for the season. So far in the playoffs, he's been up only two times, has not had a hit. Throw back over to first, holding Sal Bando. One out, one on. Top half of the second inning, and there's no score between the A's and the Tigers. Pitch. High fly ball straight away center field. Mickey Stanley is coming in to make another play. He's got it. There's two out and a pitcher. Kenny Holston comes on now. Here's Kenny Holston up there. On both times, and they haven't moved him up. Curveball to Holtzman is too high. One ball, no strike. Matty Alou is on deck. The bid, Holtzman goes after a low fastball, missing it badly. It's one ball, one strike. The bat goes to the foul strike two. Kenny Holtzman ducked that ball, had the bat on his shoulder, and it hit the bat while he was on his knees in the batter's box. That's what you call control. One ball, two strikes. Kenny Holtzman, not a bad hitter. He's in the hole now. Big to him. He struck out swinging, and he takes that curve a mile. And now here's a message on behalf of the Survivor's Benefit Plan for servicemen everywhere. In this economic-minded society, you can buy virtually anything, but you can't go to the store and buy several months or years to finish up a job such as raising your family. There is a way to buy time, though. It's a new program called the Survivor Benefit Plan. This plan buys time for you in the form of financial security for your family if you die. SBP, the Survivor Benefit Plan. Look into it now. Your personnel office has details. Well, as uh, you have noticed, that uh, our quality from the West Coast on our feed from the Oakland A's Network hasn't been exactly the best. You're right. It uh, has been on a backup line. We have experienced some trouble yesterday with Mutual and today with the Oakland A's Network. We're sorry for the trouble, but it is not under our control. It is at the telephone company switching site. And now we have cleared up the primary line, and now let's get back to the Oakland A's Network at Detroit. Last half of the second inning, here, Willie Horton will be the leadoff man, and Mickey Stanley and Ike Brown. Well, the A's would like to be coming back home tonight on another World Airways flight. Red Daly, the chairman of the board of World Airways, came with the A's here on one of his own planes. To Detroit, and I got to say, Jimmy, I've been a lot of airplane flights in 11 years in this business. I've never been on one like that. I have the stakes and the service, and they must have had eight people waiting on us, and uh, it was just tremendous. And the swing A's band that played all during the flight, and believe me, I never enjoyed anything more. Charlie Finley and Ed Daly both got on the speakers, the airplane made speeches. Charlie spent a lot of time talking to all his players, walking them down the aisle. It was quite a flight. Willie Horton, big left fielder for the Tigers, and the first pitch is outside from Kenny Holtzman, ball one. Horton played in 108 games this year for Detroit. He hit 11 homers. Batted 231. He'll be followed here by Stanley and Ike Brown. Holtzman said, strike called a good fastball in there. John Rice just faked me out. It's one ball and one strike, apparently. Here's the pitch. That's a strike. That makes it two and one. It must have been, instead of one and one, it was two and oh. Willie Horton, one of the strongest men in baseball. 
Ralph and six time with a fastball fouled off, and Willie almost spun around completely out of the batter's box. That's what you call going after it. curveball right now. He'll have a jumper off his feet. Days and the Tigers in game three of the 1972 American League Championship Series. The A's leading two games to none, needing one more to go into the World Series. 2-2 two, two pitch to Horton. Curve, swinging, strike three, left it a mile. Dennis drops the ball, but throws the first for the out. Horton never knew where he was. Well, no doubt in my mind, if he threw a curveball anywhere near that plate, he was going. Mickey Stanley, the Tigers center fielder, one of the outstanding defensive center fielders around. And this year he had a good year with a bat. He had 14 home runs for Detroit this year, his best ever in the big league. Mickey knocked in 55 runs. His batting average was a little lower than he likes at 234. Good man to have in that big center field here in Tiger Stadium. Olsen's pitch is a strike on the outside corner. I read him with Flair. This young man, when he first came up, has been an outstanding fielder. He can do the job. He knows how to play the hitters. It's just been he's had a very weak bat. There's a bouncing ball. Off third foul. Mm. Vando got over there to make sure. He cleared that ball barehanded. What a beautiful fall day here in Michigan. Bright sunshine. Kenny Holtzman is ahead of Stanley now at 0-2. Oh, now the A's lefty comes to the plate with a fastball that's hit up into the air in the right field, and Matty Lou is going over there. He's got it. And right now, it's hard to tell what's the sun field here, Jimmy. I know Joe Rudy in left field is probably looking right at it over the top of the grandstand. How about right field right now? It's been a tough start in this ballpark. Uh, the shadows is the only thing that really bothers you at twilight. Game or a doubleheader, and it's the second game of a doubleheader. Generally, uh, it doesn't bother you that much if you've got the right kind of glasses. It don't bother you. Here's Ike Brown, another Tiger strongman. They leave the league in big bodies for sure. Six to him. They're swinging a foul ball right upstairs. I'm telling you, we are close to home plate here where we're broadcasting in Detroit. Where's my glove? If you go after it, don't bail out because I'm going to depend on you. I want to tell you, I'm not putting my hand up here. Here's a one strike pitch. Curve ball high and outside to Ike Brown, who hit 250 for the year for Detroit. Can I hurt my golf game? You can't play golf. You work too hard. I <laughs> you can't think of that. One ball and one strike on Ike Brown. Two down in the second inning, no score. Olsen peers in for the sign. He's got it. Fastball misses low and away. Two and one. Olsen is an in and outer pitcher. He Here's for spot. He's the control type pitcher. Here's the pitch. Foul ball upstairs. Kenny Olsen this year with the Oakland A's enjoyed the best year he's ever had in the Major League. And this has to be the biggest game he's ever pitched in his career. He has had two no-hitters while pitching for the Cubs. But to win the pennant for a team would be something. 2-2 pitch. Brown takes a burning fastball. He had him over match. Strike three call. Oh, baby, did he pop that one in there. So we've gone through two innings here at Tiger Stadium, and the score is nothing and nothing. The Tigers, with their backs to the wall today, down 0-2 to two in the best of three series, were given the slight edge by the odds makers because of the pitching that's on the line today. Coleman has a 2-1 and one record against the A's during the regular season while Holtzman, the left-hander, has won only one of four outings against Detroit. Manager Billy Martin predicted before the game somewhat inaccurately, we've beaten Holtzman every time we've seen him. If we win today, we'll be in good position with Mickey Lolich ready for Wednesday and Woody Fryman on Thursday. Although the A's hope they can go fishing Wednesday and Thursday, many observers think they actually will be more ready than the Tigers if they have to play ball then. They have, of course, the left-hander Vida Blue, who was last year's sensation, who has appeared in the playoffs so far only as a reliever to face one batter. He will be ready for a fourth game if needed, and then they can have their ace lined up, Jim Catfish Hunter, the first game starter for the fifth game finale if it goes all the way down the string. Well, we're ready for action now. The 
top half of the third inning, and I didn't have very much to describe in the way of run scoring. Maybe Jim Woods can. Here he is. I hope so, Ronnie. Thank you very much. As Patty Alou stands in, and hopefully, as the battle cry of the A's has been all year, and Chick in his playoffs, make it happen. And Alou doubled down the late field line his first time up, but we were not be scoring that inning. Here's the delivery, and it comes inside, and very nearly hits the tail. Gets away from three ends. One ball and no strike. Earl Garland in the coaching box at third. Jerry and Darrell over first from the A's in their California goal this afternoon. Max Joe will be next, and then Joe Riddy. Facing Joe Coleman, who has set four of the A's down on strike. The entire side of the first inning after he got in trouble. Big bouncing ball over the head of the first baseman down the right field line again. Base hit, and Alou is going to settle for a single. That ball of Matty took off like it was hit on Astro, sir. He certainly did. He hit right in front of the plate. It just did a tremendous hop. And Kaylor made a fine play going over to the line and knowing how to play that position out there. He can blindfoldly get the ball, throw the second base, and throw a strike. So there was no need of him trying to go for two. For the third inning in a row, the A's get their leadoff batter on. Alou doubled in the first, Bando singled in the second, and now Matty singles again. And here is Maxwell. Walked on a 3-2 pitch his first time to the plate. Decision day, will it be? Outfield straight away, they're not too deep against Maxwell. Here's the delivery, and Maxi takes a ball inside as he starts up as if the bunt. One ball, no strike. Very unusual to see K-Line playing so close to the line, so it looks like they're going to pick him tight. They're going to try to pick him tight and try to uh, jam him, but Alou is uh, pretty smart. He knows how to figure out these pitchers, and uh, that's why K-Line was able to throw him out. I mean, throw the ball to second base so quickly. Crowd is very, very quiet right at the moment now. He's been a uh, total of three hits off Joe Coleman, and he is uh, pitched in and out of trouble. In every inning, he has worked so far. Maxwell takes the strike, and again, he's starting up the bunch. One and one the count. Maxi was already and then pulled it back, and it looked like the pitch put the plate right at the knee level. No score. We're in inning number three. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati in their duel over in the Rhine Land, where the Pirates are game up on the red. Lob tossed over to first, where Ike Brown is holding against the loon, and he just calmly walked back. He was only about a step off the bag. One ball, one strike. Here's the delivery, and the ball is finally foul. And it's the second time in as many plate appearances that Maxwell has been unable to bunt. As Monty remarks, he is a good bunny. But he hasn't been able to handle Coleman stuff so far. One ball, two strikes. And again, he looks down at Earl Goyne. Coleman stays around at his outfield, playing very shallow. He steps into Horton. He's back away he's in uh, left field. A lot of empty seats there in the bleachers today. And a lot of forwards all around the stand, too. Here's the delivery. Maxwell shortens up, takes it high. He's going to bat again. Now it goes even. Two balls, two strikes. Matty Alou is the runner at first base. There's nobody out as the A's try to get out in front here in the top half of the third. I would have to think that uh, Williams is not wanting to hit a double play to keep uh, the good part of our batting order coming up to power. Rudy with 19 home runs and the other two guys with 25 and 26. So uh, they want to stay on that double play if they possibly can. Goldman, a very deliberate type pitcher today. And Maxwell brings his strikeout. Five strikeouts now for Joe Coleman. And we're only in the third inning. He got Rudy his first time up with two on and nobody out. But now Big Joe comes up there to cut again. Leg is going from right field straight in across the field. But anything gets up in the air here today, no telling what's probably going to happen to it. 340 down the left field line, 325, most inviting down the right field line. Ballpark, for the most part, has always been a heavy spread. There's a little bit favoring the left hand batter. Coleman with another long stare in. A little with his lead. Here's the pitch, and Rudy Buck for third. Picked up by Rodriguez. He throws it the first time in time. A beautiful bunt by Joe Rudy. And Rodriguez had to charge way in. And very nearly threw the ball away. Ike Brown finally caught it, sitting down. Well, what a great play by Rodriguez. But I have to say that uh, Brown got a lucky break when that ball bounced so far. Uh, he had a hand cut in his play. We were all the way down the bullpen. Alou is at second. Rudy at first. Four hits now off Coleman. And here's Reggie Jackson. Jackson struck out. Swinging viciously at a 3-2 pitch in the first inning. The ballpark gets uh, Jackson his favorite. 
Down to his uh, fine career as an Oakland A, and he can really sting the Tigers now. The A's threatened for the third time in a row against Coleman. Stanley has deepened quite a bit in center field. Here's Coleman sits to Reggie, and he swings and misses for a strike. Oh, and one. Gave him a good curveball, he didn't get it. He didn't quite go tight on. He went a little bit too quarter, so he may have changed his uh, plan of attack. I saw his left hand go out to two. But that's probably two quarters. Oh, and one on Jackson. Mike Epstein is on deck. McCullough seated way over in behind the loop. Rodriguez well off the line at third. Coleman works to Reggie and Covey does for a ball. A tough ball that time. One ball, one strike. We're over on the first base side today. We never worked uh, here. We're always over on the third. The Dutch been occupied with the network today. So we have a little different view of the ball game than we normally have here in Tiger Stadium. Now the ball is going to be looked at by plate umpire John Wright. Tired back. One ball, one strike, one out. Alou is at second, and Joe Rudy is on at first. If the Tigers do stay alive, they're expected to come right back with Mickey Lillich tomorrow against the A's. Coleman finally stuffed the sign for being out. Here's the 1-1 pitch, and that's a big high bounding ball to Taylor. He first it, picks it up, draws him back. He goes down towards first, and by the time he finally picked the ball up again, all he had to do was just shovel a little uh, throw over there, and it looked like uh, Jenkins had his palms down and suddenly fired his fist down to indicate the out. So it is four to three with a Lou moving over to third, and Joe Rudy in the second. And the batter is Mike Epstein. He was up in this position in the first inning. And they pitched to him and struck him out. See what they do with him this time. Freehand is looking over into the dugout. And they're repositioning Willie Horton. They brought him in somewhat in left field and got him way off the line in left and way over toward left center. Two on, two out. He's a stranded three already. Here's the delivery now to Mike. He swings on the curve and doesn't get it. No balls in a sight. He didn't even get a good cut that time. The A's can't say they haven't had their chances early, and they've had the big men up there in most cases where they wanted them. But as yet, there's been no crushing blow on a crafty Joe Coleman this afternoon. Here's the delivery. High and wide as the loop broke down the line. One ball, one strike. Sunshine pouring down the field. The home plate area is in shadows. It's the only thing that is. Coleman's jaws working curiously on a piece of gum out there. Comes now to the sub position, delivers to Epstein, and there's a drive foul. Right field side, way back into the upper deck. Mike pulled the trigger a little too quickly and hit it a long ways, but didn't even threaten. It sounded like he hit a pumpkin. <laughs> didn't sound very good, did it? No, he sounded like he hit a pumpkin. It like he hit it for the Saturday evening post. He got in front of Mike down and got him on the hook. One ball and two strikes. Alou down the line, Rudy off second. Here is Coleman working, and he strikes up to go. They don't know whether it's a strikeout or not. And they now say no. John Rice asks for help down at third base, and Billy Martin's on another tirade right now. Now they're asking for the first base umpire to make a call on it. And they have denied it so far, the strike. He could not see it because of Alou on the baseline. And uh, right now they're going to ask the first base up fire, but I have to say that Alou uh, protected the... Mr. Shiloh gets in the act. Billy Martin and the crowd here gets their first uproar of the day, and naturally they are booing and booing loudly. I don't blame him. He had a good cut at that ball. <laughs> it certainly looked like it, Jim. He sure did. Now they'll really be up in the air if that scene gets a hold of one. Epstein is still alive, let me tell you. The Tigers were back there all on their way off the field. And they couldn't believe it when the strike was not called by John Rice. Matty Lou had already given his batting helmet to Irv Norton. <laughs> <laughs> that ought to tell him something. If we don't, if we don't get a hit here now. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. He does. Two out, two on. No score, third inning. It is. 
and this place is now in an uproar. Coleman is ready. Here's the pitch to Epstein, and he's stuck him out swinging. Strikeout number six. No runs. Two hits. No errors. Two left on. We go to the bottom of the third. Nothing, nothing. Well, we got some uh, real hot spots going on at Detroit right now. Uh, it looked for a moment as though Billy Martin were really uh, going to go jaw to jaw, but he cooled down very quickly. And probably that gave some fuel to Coleman, who just uh, hits up his britches and just fired a bullet past Epstein to make sure the second strike that retired the side. We'd like to remind you that later this afternoon, the Pittsburgh Pirates will go with right-hander Doc Ellis at Cincinnati against left-hander Ross Grimsley of the Reds. Each pitcher had 22 regular season decisions, with Ellis winning 15 and Grimsley picking up 14 victories. And if the Pirates win that one, they close out that series and go on to meet either Oakland or Detroit in the World Series starting Saturday at Pittsburgh. And, of course, if Cincinnati comes on to win the next two games, the World Series would start there Saturday afternoon. In any case, no matter where it starts, the series opens Saturday, and the broadcast will be at 1645 GMT over AFRTS and the NBC radio network. Scoring chances for the A's. Makes you a little apprehensive about the way this one is going. Holtz and Orr has been top two as he faces Dick McCollum, who is 0 for 9 in the playoffs so far. He'll be followed up there by Joe Coleman. McCollum, a left-hand batter, batting down in the number eight spot today, and they gave to and he let off. So we head into the last half of the third inning, and Tiger fans are breathing easier, and so far Coleman has been the master of the A's big hitters, Jackson and Epstein. Pitch is up high from Kenny. One ball, no strike. Tigers have had only one hit. A two-out single by Al Kaline in the first inning. Here's the left-hander throwing again, and it hit his bat. Glances back foul for a strike. One and one. Crowd starting to build it up again here with rhythmic applause. Tigers with their backs to the wall. The A's need one to come home tonight. Here's the pitch, and down the hall, past Epstein, foul! Epstein threw himself right over the foul line, and the umpire immediately waved the ball foul. So that is one and two. Well, they're making that ball a so far foul. These fans are begging for anything. They sound like Martin right now. So Kenny Holtman has Dick McAuliffe behind in the count, one and two. Seemingly cool, calm, and collected. A veteran, wily left-hander. Here's the delivery and a curveball and wrapped through in the center field, a base hit. And for the first time in the game, the Tigers get their leadoff batter on. Dick McGall's first hit of the championship playoff. The ball got a sidearm curveball up in his eyes. He just smashed it up the middle. This young guy at first base knows how to protect that plate. You'd have to make that good pitch down away from him if you're going to strike him out. He's not a real great hitter, but he protects that plate well. Well, here is Colvin, and now it's the Oakland A's that will be looking for the attempted sacrifice on the part of the Tiger Hurler, with the top of the batting order coming around next. Here's the pitch, and he swings on it, hits it down to Green, who tags out McCullough and throws the first. No, they don't get him. And McCullough, and uh, Green is out for testing, and McCullough interfered with him all the way, and Sadak is not going to allow that. I would have to think that the runner had the right of way to knock him down. He had the ball. If he didn't have the ball, it would have been different, but he had the ball. Dick is uh, Dick Williams complaining that McCullough put his hands up in the air and obstructed uh, Green's throw. But it's an argument that we are destined to lose this time. I would have to think that he hit him before he put his arms up, though. He hit him uh, and then put his arms up, so I'd have to think that that's what happened. This is going to be some kind of a controversial ball game. They just just getting Joe Coleman as Billy Martin took the bunt sign off, and he tried to chop it through a hole, hit it right to Green. If Green threw that ball right away to first base, they'd have had an easy fourth play or a rundown on McCollum. Couldn't throw it. He couldn't see. Now here's Tony Taylor, the leadoff batter, who flies very deep to Jackson his first time up. One on, one out, and the pitcher, Joe Coleman, has gone the jacket down at first base. No score. We're in the last half of any number three in what is already a wild, crazy ball game here at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. There's the pitch, and Taylor takes the burning bat ball right at the waist for a call strike. 0-1. 
These are their share of rooters here today, but they are far, far outnumbered by the bug-eyed Tiger fans who won a victory in the worst way. A swing and a foul ripped off the mask of Johnny Wright. No balls, two strikes on Taylor. I wouldn't want to be an umpire for all the TNC today because every play just seems to be a big one. Every decision seems to be a difficult one. I don't think you were ever in danger of being an umpire in uh, your entire life, James, and I don't think that uh, you have any chance of being one either. He's a pitch to Taylor, and he showed him the fastball outside, one and two. Colfax is giving me the business from the other booth. He just turned away for a second, but he's really giving me the business about umpiring. <laughs> <laughs> one out, one on. Rudy, way, way off the line in left field. There's a ground ball hit down to Maxwell. He grabs it. He'll step on second. There's the throw to first. Double oh, play. They got him that time. A 6-3 twin killing. And a one, uh, no runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. And we go to the fourth inning, tied nothing-nothing. Oh, never a dull day with the A's and the Tigers, huh? Bert Campanaris' is three-day suspension plus that $500 fine from baseball president Joe Cronin of the American League were exactly what uh, manager Billy Martin of the Tigers had demanded, even though it surprised a lot of baseball people by its severity. Williams said it didn't take, it really didn't make any difference anyhow because, as the manager pointed out, Campanaris' ankle injury being hit by LeGros' pitch on Sunday would have kept him out of the rest of the week anyhow. Williams said his ankle is badly swollen. He would not have been able to participate, and the decision had been made to send him home before we were notified of the suspension. He was on his way to the airport when we caught him with the official notice. Baseball President Cronin did not levy any punishment against pitcher Legro, who was ejected from the game according to plate umpire Nestor Shylock to even things out so the game could continue and tempers could cool down. Well, that uh, was one episode at Detroit, or rather at Oakland, and today we're at Detroit, and there's probably plenty of fireworks still coming in this one. We've already had two altercations on the field. Cronin, however, at one interesting point must be uh, mentioned here, did turn down Martin's request to replace Eddie Brinkman on the Tiger roster with slugger Frank Howard. Of course, Brinkman is out because of that flip disc problem, but they, they acquired Howard from the Texas Rangers one day too late and he was not qualified for the playoffs of the World Series if the Tigers get that far. That's Frank Howard. Sal Bando leads off, and let's get back to Jim Woods at Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Sal Bando, who singles through the hole in the left, his first time up, takes the first pitch up high for a ball. One and all the count. I'll tell you how bad I want to go. I'd ride him to the World Series. <laughs> no matter where it is. <laughs> That's going to be a long ride. The long ride. I don't care. <laughs> it's been a long time. Bando fouled back and out of play. One ball, one strike. Well, he goes on the plane with us. I'm, I'm going to give him first all of the seat. <laughs> He's a horse thing. <laughs> he fits with the teeth. He might be a horse with a bat. But that's a horse with another color. Just outside, he almost had Bando going after that just breaking ball that he's had going for him all day in which he spanned six days over the front three innings. Two balls and a strike on the captain of the Oakland Club, Sal Bando, in a deep crouch right now at the plate. Coleman brings it in, down the middle, strike two call, two and two to count. Bando just stands there staring, hands on his hips and looking at the plate. Looks like a pretty good pitch from up here, although we're not behind the plate, as I say, and sometimes it's uh, difficult to angle to tell exactly where it was. Here's the delivery, and Bando strikes out swinging. Seven strikeouts now for Coleman, and we'll pause for station identification. This is SCN Radio, the voice of information in the Canal Zone, at 790 and 1420. opportunities that Coleman will really put it together now and he won't get too many more shots at him. He throws inside the tennis to fly to center field very weakly his first time up. First inning of the game that Coleman has gotten, they lead off batter on. Down low inside, ball two. Two and all the count. Coleman's next delivery, and it's low, ball three. (laughs) 
We are working in some kind of tight quarters here today, next in between George Kell, who telecasts the Tigers games, and Ernie Harwell and Ray Lane, who broadcasts them, and we're in the middle. Inside and high ball four, and Simmons is on. Now that's the second pass that he's given out. Yes, Billy? So the attention for Green right now, they're calling him back, and uh, it may be in our favor. That's all right, to see a lot of strikeouts. Uh, he's throwing an awful lot of pitches, and we need strikeout batters, and walk a lot of guys, and in jams. Uh, you may lose it in a hurry, so let's hope that's going to happen as uh, Tom Mitchell comes out to pinch hit. Greg Mitch is going to get his first play, and we will then have uh, Ted Kubiak, who usually goes in first. We will also today also have Tim Cullen in reserve, but Maxwell is in the ball game, of course, playing a shortstop in place of the suspended first Campanera. Freehand has gone out of the mound to talk to Coleman. There is no score. We're in any number four. Mentor going through a lot of uh, exercises down here, and okay, Monty, I'll let you back in again. Mentor's had some good luck in this ballpark. I've had the opportunity to play with Don with the Angels, and he likes to hit here. He's got a quick bat, and he's been telling me lately that he has uh, opened up his stance a little bit. And right now, let's see if he can get a hold of that sidearm curveball from uh, Joe Coleman as Jim gets seated again after going through a lot of gyrations to get Monty out of the other booth. I know how Sardine feels now. Mitchell takes outside. One ball, no strike. The inviting right field seat. So they're looking right down the throat of Don Mitchell. Brown is not holding to the runner over at first base. He's a little in behind him. Enabling uh, Tennis to get a little more of a lead. And another wide pitch ball, too. Two and oh is the count. The crowd begins to stir around again as Coleman has put in trouble in every inning he's been in so far. And so far, he has escaped with a great strikeout pitch going for him today. Looks at tennis, delivers, and right at the letters for a call strike. It's two and one. Kenny Holtzman will be next. Good lead by Tennis. Brown now dances back in behind him, and Joe Coleman moves off the rubber. We can't see into our dugout, but the Tiger dugout for the moment is very quiet over there. Here's the delivery. Strike two call on Mincher. He's got a curveball that just picked him up on the outside corner. I don't think Mincher agrees with Rice's right call, but there's nothing he's going to do about it. Two and two. I don't think that curveball did as much as he was expecting. It was almost a slider. It just broke very little. waiting. Here's the delivery. It's very high and wide. Ball three, a full count. We'll keep an eye on tennis there. Coleman talking to himself. Matter of fact, he talked to everybody in the ballpark on that one. He yelled rather loud when he let that pitch go. He walked around in a circle out there on the mound, too. As he peers in toward Big Bill Freehand, working his uh, first game of the championship playoff. Joe Coleman out of the tough position. Here's the payoff pitch. Tennis goes for strike three. Throw to second is in time. Double play. Coleman and Tennis is out stealing. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. We go to the bottom of the fourth, nothing, nothing. Joe Coleman at this stage is throwing real straight ropes up at home plate. He's firing that ball, and Mincher was caught with his bat on his shoulder as he whistled a fastball about letter high on the outside corner, and uh, the man at second was a dead duck on the throwdown by about five feet. We'd like to remind you that in just about, oh, 25, 30 minutes from now, the fourth and what could be the final game of the National League playoff series between the Pirates and the Reds at Cincinnati will be getting underway, and we'll keep you posted on the progress of that ball game after it gets underway, and then as soon as this game is over, uh, we would imagine somewhere around, oh, 1945 or 2000 GMT will probably join that game at Cincinnati in progress. Of course, it'll be uh, Doc Ellis pitching today for the Pirates, who hope to close out the series. And Ross Grimsley will get the nod for the Cincinnati Reds. He is the nominee of Sparky Anderson. Anderson feels that uh, it's been a pitcher series thus far. The hitters are due to break out, and he's hoping his club will do that today. Ted Kubiak takes over for Dick Green at second base. That is the only change, and Kenny Holtzman will have to work to the two, three, four hitters in the Tigers' team of things today. Rodriguez, Keyline, and Big Bill Freehand. 
He's now over the, uh, has still standing only five men. But that was a big out the Tigers got on the attempted steal by tennis that now makes Holtzman lead off the next inning. Here's Rodriguez. Hit a weak hopper right back to the box that Holtzman grabbed off and fired him out his first time out. All the Tiger fans come alive again. Boy, there's a hundred tennis here today, and they're all derogatory about the A's. Tennis settles in behind the plate, and Holtzman ready to buckle down to work again. Rodriguez takes up high for a ball. One and all the count. No score, fourth inning. Make a pause. Ripley, you're up. The big ballpark right off Jackson Avenue here in Detroit. There's a drive. Left field. Joe Rudy is in his tracks and gets it. Hard hit line drive, and Rudy never even moved. He was in perfect position. One out to Key Lion, who has one of the two hits off Holtzman today. A single with two men out his first time up. And Tennis is off to talk to Holtzman. Key Lion has had a good series so far. Out of a throwing error he was charged with, which was a tough error to give him that won game one for the Oakland A's. Daylon, I guess, if he ever decided to go into politics, might be elected mayor of Detroit. He's been that popular here down through the years. And it is entirely justified, too. First pitch to Al is in tight for a ball. One and all the count. Out, nobody on. A's outfield almost in straightaway position against the great uh, veteran. Breaking ball down low, and Holtzman is behind him. Two balls, no strike. As soon as I can see K-Line come up all day long with nobody on base. I'll buy that. It would be delightful. Holtzman has not been behind many of the hitters, but he's behind now 2-0 and, oh, and brings this one outside for ball three. Then Holtzman walks off the mound, blows on his pitching hand a little bit. Go strikes on key line with three hand do next. And he the key line didn't have the green light here. Fat ball right down the middle, taking first strike. Three and one. Cook took the quick peek over his shoulder at the third base coach, Joe Schultz. Here's the three one delivery, and it's ball four. Mr. Holtzman has sold out his first free ticket of the afternoon. The Tigers get a base runner, and Keyline now has been a base runner twice. Here is three hands. Fly to center his first time up. Kenny Point at the dirt doing a little landscaping out there. Bando, Maxville, Kubiak, and Epstein. The A's enter defense with Big Mike holding against Key Line over at first base. Freehand using a very dark colored bat all the way. An opposing figure there, and Holtzman is low for a ball, 1 0. And what's the new baseball from John Wright? As you remember, early in the year, uh, Holtzman had an awful lot of trouble. I guess he walked four batters in a row one time and walked in a run. So he has a little problem with that mound out there. I don't think he uh, uh, cares too much for it. One ball, no strike. Key line with a walking lead off first base. There's the delivery to freehand, and it's struck down the left field line. A fair ball. Key line is on his way to third. Freehand heads for second. The throw comes in there, and it's not in time. A double by freehand. And the Tiger fans roar. It's just inside the line, almost right over the bag, but cleanly a fair ball, and Bando had no chance. And Rudy had to go deep in the corner to get it. So the Tigers with their first big scoring throw of the game. Second and third occupied. Only one man out, and the batter will be powerful Willie Horton. By the Blues up in the bullpen right now, warming up, along with Raleigh Fingers. And a conference on the mound. Holtzman, Dennis, Bando. Maxville looking into the dugout to see where Dick Williams wants his infield. Right at the moment, Kubiak is up tight. So is Maxville. Now Maxie yells something else that uh, Kubiak, and they're going to stay in close. 
for a possible play on T line at the plate. Tigers threatening to take the lead here in game three. As the DAs have squandered four scoring opportunities over the front four innings. Martin struck out his first time up. But even a fly ball here can get the Tigers out in front. Here's the pitch. Fast ball, strike call. No one won the count. Willie Horton now walks away. Well out of the batter's spot. On deck is Mickey Stanley. But the duel now is Holston and one of the strongest men in all of baseball. Willie Horton. line at third. Freehand, long lead out at second. Here's the delivery. A breaking ball, and he didn't swing at it. He almost went after a ball. It bounced on the plate. Blocked by Tennant. And now Williams is out of the dugout, and he wants the ruling on the part of uh, one of the umpires as to whether it was a strike or not. So Billy Martin lost one, and I think Dick is going to lose this one. And Dick is really mad. Instead of a no-ball, two-strike count, it is one and one. And both managers are fired up today. Both clubs are fired up. Bando is the only deep man at third. Maxie's up over half the distance, and Kubiak is up three quarters of the way. Epstein parallel with the bag. One ball, one strike. Here's T-Line breaking down the line, and the delivery's way outside, ball two. He's up time, I think, figured a squeeze might have been on. With Kaline coming down the line, and Holston made sure he got that ball well outside. Two balls and a strike. Well, yeah, holding his hands out in the question as he leads off second base. Here's Kenny into the motion. Here's the delivery. A fastball outside, ball three. Three and one. Was started this double by walking K line on five pitches. It would upset me a bit to see him walk him right now. I'd rather take my chance with my infield back a little bit with Stanley than have my infield in halfway with a guy who can hit the ball so hard. I hope he makes a tough pitch on him. We'll see in just a moment as Olsen doesn't hesitate too long. He's into the 3 1 motion. Here's the delivery. He walked it. Tigers has the bases loaded. Dick Williams out to the mound. Right now. Dick wants to confer with Holston, see what he feels like, see what his trouble is, or something else. Wouldn't surprise me a bit that he might bring fingers right in right now because uh, it's such a big ball game. You want to get it as fast as you can. They had a day off yesterday, so I wouldn't be surprised if he's thinking about it right now. And Stanley up there, uh, uh, then they bring in a... So it's either they want to pitch to Northrop or they'd rather pitch to him. And I think I'd rather pitch to Stanley myself. It's talking to Bandol, talking to Tennis. While Kubiak and Max go confer, and he is going to stay with St. Louis born Kenny Holtzman. Northrop's got about, uh, I don't know, eight or nine home runs with the bases loaded, so he's been a tough guy to get out with bases loaded. Stanley, a pretty good hitter. He's not, uh, that strong, so you got a chance with this guy. Stanley, his first time up, skied uh, rather deep on a well hit ball to a loo. And now the A's send their uh, infield back halfway. T line is third, freehand is second, and Willie Harton is first. And Epstein is playing up in front of him. And Holtzman in his biggest jam of the afternoon. No score, last half of the fourth inning. And Tiger Stadium is a streaming madhouse right now. Here is the delivery, a ripping foul right over the booth of Ernie Harwell. Very close to us. No balls and a strike. Stanley really attacked that first pitch. He really tried to jump on it. By the blue, Raleigh fingers. Both loose away, so both bullpens have been up early today. It's all out in this one as the A's try to close it out and the Tigers fight to stay alive. Here's the pitch by Holtzman. Ball just outside, one and one the count. And again, blowing on the fingers of his pitching hand. Oh, how the A's need a one-hopper right at somebody. This game, of course, is the ones in Oakland. There's the aura, the tension of a World Series game, although you know you're not there yet. 
One ball, one strike. Olsen delivers. There's a fly ball into shallow center field. Kaline is tagged up. Jackson has it. And Kaline doesn't come. Kaline does not come on a fly ball to very shallow center field. Two men out. And Holson now must get Ike Brown and get out of the jam. Ball was stood off the end of the bat. He was way out in front looking for a something yet, so I think he took a little off that pitch, and Jackson, who was uh, in this position to throw that ball, a perfect strike, not too far behind second base, so Kaline would not have had a strike, chance to score. Now, of course, the infield can deepen to normal depth, that scene has come on, he's had a word with Holston, these two are very close friends on and off the field. So, the situation, Kaline remains the third, free at second, and Willie Horton at first. Two down, last half of the fourth inning, no score. The Tigers still pose a tremendous threat here to Holtzman. As another one of the strong men of the Bengals stands in there. Powerfully built Ike Brown, a right-hand batter. Keyline breaks along the line. Here's the pitch. Fast ball, tight call. No one won the count. I think Kenny's going on his pitching end. Just a, more or less a nervous gesture more than anything else. It's not that cold out here today. But after every delivery, he walks around and... Whistles into his fist a little bit. No balls and a strike. Three Tiger runners ready to go, and Brown almost swung at a pitch that put him onto the dirt. One ball, one strike, and the crowd now thinking he threw it to uh, uh, Brown, which is ridiculous. He's not going to throw at anybody with a baseball. Uh, they're, they're crying now. This is a good crying now. I played here for 20 years. They cry. Give him some water. One ball, one strike. And it's hang in there, Kenny time. Here's the delivery. A shot up the middle. Face hit. One run scoring. Here comes Freehan in. And the Tigers lead two to nothing. Well, just rode it right over second base. And Max Drill and Arkubiak have no chance for it. And this crowd now is absolutely wild. Two to nothing Detroit. Still with two men on and two men out. And the batter will be Dick McCollum. Holtzman was so close to getting out of it without a run being scored that it was tough to be. So the Tigers have had one big scoring chance of the ball game and they capitalized on it. The A's have had four and they have not cashed any of theirs. Lagala single his first time up. Horton on his second and Ike Brown, who now is the batting star of the day thus far for Detroit. On at first base, McCollum slams one down to the right side. Kubiak is up and on the first that's it. Two runs on two hits. No errors and a couple left. We go to the fifth inning. Tigers two open nothing. Minnesota Twins pitcher Jim Cott said he is going to forestall retirement plans and thinks he can make a major league comeback with 25 victories next year. Although he was reportedly the leading candidate for the chairmanship of the National Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Cott said he will remain in this winter's Florida Instructional League and try for a comeback next spring. The Twins pitcher said he is working out daily and will definitely play again next season. Cott, you know, was uh, working on a really great year. He was 10-2 and two before he broke a pivotal bone in his wrist in midseason. He thinks he can win 25 next year and said, I feel better at the age of 34 than I did at 28. Cott has lost 30 pounds over the last two years and is now on a grapefruit diet. If I was off to a good start, he said, my best start ever in 72. Initially, Cott said doctors told him just to wrap up his injured wrist, but then a broken bone was discovered, and that took him out of action. With 179 wins, he could be the winningest active American League pitcher if he returns to the Twins roster next spring. And uh, with the kind of year the Twins had, they can use all the help they can get in 1973. Thank you very much, Possum, and uh, we may have a pinch hitter right here for Holtzman. They're taking their time getting at somebody out of there, but somebody's reaching for their bat. Holtzman's throwing off a lot of pitches. Rodriguez is going to say a few words for him. He struck out eight. He's been in trouble all afternoon. Certainly we hadn't taken advantage of uh, the opportunity. We've left about uh, six men on base, and we're going to send up Manguel right now. Manguel on the ear. Hit 250. He had five home runs and 32 RBIs. So Joe Coleman, with a two-run lead, will face Manguel Alou 
and Maxwell. And if he gets on, Joe Rudy. Bill Freehand. Certainly a great inspiration to this ball club behind that plate. He's their quarterback. And he got back in this lineup today and then doubled at the K-line and walked. And then with the bases loaded, a base hit by Ike Brown. Scores two. And there's a breaking ball. Score out of miss. By Angel Manguel. Outfield. Brown towards right. Stanley. Rather shallow in center. Freehand gives the sign. Here's a sidearm breaking ball. Misses inside. Ball one. And the count now goes to one and one. About 35,000 fans here today. Coleman now working rather quickly. Comes to start out with a fastball. Just snapped it right by him. And well, he was overmatched by that pitch. Two strikes and one ball. And Joe Coleman, who now has got plenty of confidence with the two runs he received. There's another breaking ball swung on. Long fly ball, left field. That ball is a lot of play. Horton on the move after it, but it's upstairs. One of my favorite ballparks. In fact, the favorite ballpark I always enjoy playing is as a hitter and a fielder. When you play center field here, you've got 440 feet to dead center field. 415, 400. Oh, just to the right of each left field and right field. Coleman now ready. The one-two delivery. Fastball way outside, and Manguel chased it. It must have been a breaking ball. It's awfully hard to tell what that ball does sitting to the right here. And that was a breaking ball that Manguel chased. For strikeout number nine for Joe Coleman. Matty Lou, who's got two for two, a double and a single, stepped in. Alou lined the double down the right field line and then bounced one over the head of Ike Brown. Coleman ready. Fires the fastball and point on. And pops out of the glove of three hands. Strike one. Matty having a good cut at that pitch. He can pop one out of here. It's 325 down the line. K-line not playing too deep. He knows how to play that outfield. He can get back to that fence in a hurry. The whitest track that you can find in baseball gives you a good indication where you are near the fence. There's a breaking ball. He sent it above but took it as Rodriguez was charging. And the purpose for that is to have a Lou be able to just punch one by him now if he could because Rodriguez has always got to be on the alert for a bunt. The 1-1 pitch. There's a breaking ball. Attempted punch. And he doesn't get it. That time he was going to drag it as Tony Taylor was dragging coming in for the drag punt. Ike Brown way off the bag at first base. And they have talked this thing over. I imagine Taylor was going to try to feel that ball because he was moving rather quickly. Raleigh Fingers warming up in the bullpen. The one-two pitch, a sidearm breaking ball that doesn't get it. And a real junk curve ball to a left-hander. We've had our chances. We've had two men on base in the first inning. One in the second, two in the third. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Fastball square and miss, strike three. And that ball, a bottom saw, but it was a sinker. Strikeout number 10. As Matty Alou goes down swinging. And the fans here have got this club hopped up a little bit. It's a long way to go in this ball game. We've got about four or five more times at the plate. Maxwell walked his first time up and then without swinging. Coleman comes to the side with a fastball, just missing outside. On deck. Flag going out towards left. This ball like the ball really carries good. The one ball pitch is going out and miss. Strike one. And Coleman now is really hitting those corners. Freehand behind the plate. Knowing his pitchers and knowing the hitters in the league, he calls a good ball game. The one one pitch. There's a change up, misses inside, and freehand. Having his troubles holding on to that ball, they're popping right out of his gloves. Two balls and two strikes. Two balls and a strike. Tigers with four hits. The Athletics with four hits. Flag now blowing fifth to left field. The pitches hitting the outside corner and call strike two. Maxwell stretched spread out up at that plate. Kalei moves in a few steps and right. The 2-2 two -two pitch is over the top. That's one the outside corner call strike three. And he strikes out the side for number 11. So the score, after four and a half innings of play, the Tigers two, the Oakland A's nothing. Yeah. 
Well, uh, that uh, remark that Monty Moore made a little while ago about the fact that if you let Coleman get off the hook, he could recover and fix the strong ball game. Well, it's coming back now to haunt the Oakland A's because Joe Coleman seems to be getting stronger with each passing inning. 11 strikeouts over the first five innings. At this pace, he'll strike out more than 20. The Oakland Raiders crushed the Houston Oilers on Monday night in the national TV game of the week. 34 to nothing before a packed house at the Astrodome, and the house wasn't so packed in the second half, people began leaving in droves when it was obvious that the Raiders, uh, playing against the Oilers, were going to win the ball game by a lopsided margin. They turned the game into a rout with 21 points in the final quarter. Darrell LaMonica and Ken Stabler threw one touchdown pass apiece in the final period, and Clarence Davis bowled in on a 14-yard run. The Oakland defense picked off five Oiler passes and blocked two field goal attempts. The Raiders are now 2-1-1. One, one. Houston is 1-3. and three. Wally Fingers will come in to relieve Ken Oltrin. Fingers won one of these ball games in the playoffs. He pitched three innings, gave up a home run to Al Kaline. He'll face Coleman, Taylor, and Rodriguez. Coleman hit a ball to second base. And when Dick Green fielded the ball, McCullough really gave him a shot, and Green could only make one out. Joe so, Coleman, who stands 63, weighs about 210 pounds. What a bad hitter for a pitcher. The Raleigh Finger is in relief of Kenny Olsen, who gave two runs up in the fourth inning. The first pitch from Fingers is pouring out of this. Strike one, and now you've got two right-handers pitching with good stuff. Way over the line, off the line, over by the 365 foot sign. And the fastball just misses outside. As Fingers working from the top. Good wrist. This takes someone knows how to pitch. Tennis, wing wagging sign. Jackson over in right center field. 1-1 one, one pitch. Fly on a miss. As Coleman wasn't even close to that pitch. Last half of the fifth inning. Tigers lead. Tigers leading 2 nothing. Mike Brown with a base hit with the bases loaded. Scored K-line and freehand. There's a breaking ball. Just misses as Coleman had an ocean. He wouldn't have minded if he called him out because I don't think he wants to hit right now. Mando way off the bag at third. Kubiak guarding the hole at second base. The 2-2 two -two pitch. Low, ball three, and fingers a little careless. Now gets behind. Well, it's all even up, I'd say. But any kind of a strike to Coleman will get him out of there. Especially when you're ahead of him. Right now, he's got to come right down the middle with a pitch. And this guy can hit the ball out of the ballpark. He's got good power. The C2 delivery. The foul ball off to the right side. That'll go up in the roof. And the count remains 3-2. and two. Dean Tennis behind the plate. Tennis. Giving a sign. Now the target. Fastball, high ball, four, and he loses him. The so Raleigh Fingers gets Carolyn. And Joe Coleman gets the base on ball and lays things off. And let's pause here for state's identification. Serving you from Fort Clayton and Fort Davis. This is SCN Radio at 790 and 1420. <laughs> Coaching at third base. Suzuki says a few words to Coleman as Coleman puts on his foot jacket. Now he's not sure, Coleman. He's been looking for a sign from Schultz. And Schultz looking in a dugout from Williams. Taylor, 0 for 2. Lying deep to center field and hit a double play unassisted. 6 to 3. Fingers will work from his stretch. The right hander goes to the belt, looks over at first as Taylor attempts the butt. Baldwin, rather hard by Epstein in ball territory. And the count goes to one strike. Bob Locker warming up in the bullpen. On deck, Aurelio Rodriguez in the Tigers now. Coming back after they were certainly in trouble most of this ball game early when we had men on base the first three innings. Taylor still looking down for a sign. Fingers with a one strike count on Taylor. The right-hander goes into his stretch, goes to his belt. Fires. There's a big point on ground ball to shortstop. It takes a big hop over to 
Kubiak who fires back to first base for the double play. Six to three. Six to four to three on that double play. Runners two outs. I would imagine Martin would have liked to have seen him go behind the runner right there. Or he had to hit and run, I'm not sure. As Martin now moves back underneath the stands where he's in that little cubby hole for a dugout. As Olivia Rodriguez steps in. A two double plays, Taylor is hitting him. Now Rodriguez went back to the pitcher and then lying the left. The first two times up. Good third baseman. Pretty good power. He's got nine home runs on the year. They're playing him straight away. And fingers into a full windup. Fires a fastball on the outside corner call strike one. We're very happy that Mrs. Daly is recovering from her operation. And the A's all wish her well. As fingers delivers the one strike six. A breaking ball hits the outside corner call strike two. This ball game is long from being over. Two outs. Bottom of the fifth. Tigers leading 2 nothing. Al Kaline on Jackson. Straight away in center field. The two strike pitch. A fastball misses outside. His fingers come over the top and he really hummed that pitch. One ball, two strikes. Bob Lodger warming in the bullpen. Rodriguez back in the box. Fingers taking off the side. Now he delivers a one-two pitch. There's a fastball in front of foul back over our broadcast booth. And the count remains one and two. Fingers got one of the wins. He certainly knows how to pitch this young man. He's got good stuff. He won 11 ball games on the year. Fingers shakes his head. Now he's ready. He fires a breaking ball and swung on. It's a pop fly out behind the pitcher's ball. Here comes Kubiak. Now he's hollering for it. And he takes it for out number three. The Tigers go down one, two, three in the last of the fifth. And the score after five four innings of play. The Tigers do. The Oakland A's nothing. You know, that's too long. Attendance for Major League Baseball was down during the 1972 season. The hardest hit team was the San Francisco. Giants, as you might expect, the Giants got off to a terrible start and never really recovered in the standings. The average attendance in 1971 for the Giants was slightly over 9,000 this year. Last year, it was a little more than 15,000. The overall average in the National League was about 18,000. That's down a little from last year. Over in the junior circuit, the turnout averaged slightly higher than in 1971, an average gate almost 14,000. The New York Mets, even though they went nowhere in the Eastern Division race, had the best average attendance in the National League at about 29,000 per game. The best increase was shown by the Detroit Tigers. They had the highest average in the American League. The Tigers attracted almost 26,000 last year. They averaged almost 21,200 fans a game this year. They're dragging the infield here at Tiger Stadium. As we get ready to start the sixth inning of the ball game, Joe Coleman pitching one of the best games he's ever pitched up here in the big leagues. He always is very effective against the A's. In one eight-inning game this year against Oakland, he allowed only two hits left in the ninth inning. But he has just always waited on the Oakland ball club. Man, he is at his best. And today he has struck out 11 batters in five innings. Twice he struck out the side. He has struck out at least two in every inning except the second. Here's Joe Rudy, his first big strikeout of the ball game in the first inning after a Lewis let off with a double and Maxville walked. Nobody down and Rudy took a call third strike. He had also taken call strike one. He tried to bunt on the second strike and didn't. Coleman ready. Here's the wind up in the pitch. Rudy hits one on the ground to left field. Man, oh man, where was that one in the first inning? the start of a six for the A's and now the big left-handed hitters come up Reggie Jackson and Mike Epstein who've been handled so far by Coleman either one of these guys could hit the ball out of the park in one swing and tie up the game Jackson swung and missed on strike three in the first inning he grounded out in the third 
been about a month since Jackson hit his last home run. Coleman throws to him, and Jackson fouls it off strike one. He seems to be on the pitch, but he's just not hitting it. Coleman came in tight to him that time. He struck him out with a curve in the first inning. He joined the A's a little bit today, what John Odom did to the Tigers the other day. Only he's been in a whole lot more trouble than Odom ever was in that game. The A's have been a good come-from-behind club this year. They had to come from 7 to nothing down to win their pennant in the West. Jackson takes high of all. One and one count. This is the sixth inning, and in four... Innings of this ball game, the A's have gotten their leadoff man on base. A one-one pitch to Jackson, not foul out of play. Boy, he's getting a run up in the wheelhouse, and he's hitting under the ball. It's one ball, two strikes now to Jackson. Coleman has just gone right straight at Jackson and Epstein here. Twice with first base open and runners at second and third, he has struck out Mike Epstein. They had a conference about him in the first inning, whether or not to pitch to him, and Coleman said, let me get him, and he did. And he, then he got him again in the exact same situation in the third. Pitch to Jackson. Low inside with a fastball. He just missed with that one. 2-2. Two -two. Boy, he's moving that ball around, changing speed. The A's have out-hit the Tigers 5-4, to four, but the Tigers got a bases loaded. Hit up the middle by Ike Brown who is somewhat of a surprising starter at first base today. But with the injury to Duke Sims, he was put in the lineup. 2-2 two -two count. Bad arm curve ball. Jackson hits it hard to the second baseman. Taylor's got it to second for one over the first base. No double play. Jackson beat it out. Oh, he hit that ball hard. Taylor had to go down to his ground to smother the ball. But he got up and flipped it over to McCullough at second, and Jackson beat out the double play. He hit it hard, but not between them. That was a shot and a real great play by Taylor. Certainly an all-experienced second baseman who used both hands. He didn't try to backhand that ball. He got right in front of it, hoping that it, if he didn't catch it, he could knock it down somewhere. Here's Mike Epstein now. With Reggie Jackson on at first base. Scores Detroit 2 and Oakland nothing in the top of the sixth inning. They're going to use their first baseman to hold against Jackson at first base. Coleman picks Epstein as a curve outside ball one. Struck him out in the first, struck him out in the third. Both times with two men on base. A guy like this can strike out three or four times and just make one big hit and make a difference though. And right now would be the time. One and oh count. Here's the pitch. Low, it's ball two. and has walked two, struck out 11. The A's have five base hits. Two old count, here's a pitch. Thanks call, Mike Epstein Day. the Epstein swing on 2-0 and or 3-1. and one. I don't know why most power hitters ordinarily go after that pitch, but Mike takes them about 80% of the time. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Curve low, ball three. Now, Coleman has made a lot of 3-1 pitches and 2-0 and pitches today and gotten away with them. Sal Bando is on deck for Oakland, hoping to get a chance to bat here in the sixth inning. One out and one on. They're giving the left side of the infield to Epstein. Here's the pitch. Hot smash to the second baseman. Could be a double play. They go down to McCullough for one. He doesn't throw back as Jackson takes him out of the play. Coleman continues to get the A's power men, Jackson and Epstein, and they can't even get the ball out of the infield on him. Here's Sal Bando. Bando single in the second inning, struck out in the fourth.
If the A's don't win here today, it'll be Mickey Lowlich tomorrow. And he hasn't lost many games in Tiger Stadium. Most of his losses this year came on the road. The A's to the Tiger staff. A big game here today. Coleman to Bando. Curveball, he took it, a strike. That's seen at first. Here's a pitch to Bando. Curve low, a ball. One and one, the count. Bando's single came in the second inning to start the inning and went to left field. The pitch, curve almost hitting. Two and one count. They just moved uh, Rodriguez way over to the foul line. Dick Krasinski out of the Tiger dugout. Moved Rodriguez over about five or six steps from where he was playing Bando. There's a gaping hole on the left side of the infield here. Now a 2-1 pitch. Correct to the outside corner, and Bando is furious at John Rice, the plate umpire. And he is letting him know it. believe in a picking him on the outside corner too. It's hard to believe they moved Rodriguez over so far. I guess they don't want the extra base low here, which would put the tying runners on. It's second and third. But it really gives them a big shot to keep an inning going if he can hit one through there. It's two balls, two strikes to Bando. Coleman pitches. Check swing over to the first baseman. Bando is out easy in the A's are two. We go to the seventh inning. Uh, the last half of the sixth inning with a score two to nothing. Bill Verdon, the Pittsburgh Pirate manager, has made several changes in his batting order for today's game at Cincinnati. He has moved center fielder Al Oliver from the fifth spot where he had him on Monday. He's back to the number two batting position from which he operated so effectively in Saturday's 5-1 to one opening playoff win in Pittsburgh. Said manager Verdon, that's where I think he hits best in this game. Catcher Manny Sanguian, whose hustle Monday to beat out an infield hit allowed what proved to be the winning run to score, moved from the seventh spot to number five today. Second baseman Dave Cash dropped from second to sixth, and third baseman Richie Hebner has been moved from sixth to the seventh position today. Doc Ellis, a 15-game winner, is on the mound today for Pittsburgh. Ross Grimsley, a 14-game winner, on the mound for Cincinnati. The weather in Cincinnati is fairly nice. It's a nice day, but a bit on the cool side. The temperature is also approaching only near 60 degrees to the upper 50s. Raleigh Fingers pitches into the last half of the sixth inning against Al Kaline. The A's haven't gotten him out today. He's single in the first inning, and he walked to start that rally in the fourth and netted two runs. Kenny Holtzman had handled Ike Brown well with high fast stuff. Tracked him out in the second inning. He got a high strike on him in the fourth inning with the bases loaded, but then tried to throw a low one by him, and he hit it right up the middle, right over the mound. And that knocked in the two runs. Here's K-Line at the plate with Raleigh Fingers throwing. There's a drive to center field, thinking fast. Jackson blocks the ball by diving at it. K-Line turns first and holds on. Good play by Reggie. time he saw him. Now Bill Freehand comes up for the Tigers. Boy, I got to figure that the appearance of Freehand here today is, was a real key shot for the Tigers because he had not been playing and to come into a lineup right there and get a big base hit, throw a runner out at second base, it's going to pick this whole ball club up. He's their quarterback back in that play. He calls a good game as you watch him. He moves around back there and he makes that pitch or pitch. Is up with nobody out. Bill got a double just out of the reach of Bando. Over the bag at third, his last time up. A big one, too. Here's a pitch. He bumps the ball. Hard to the third baseman. Bando up with it. Throwing the first. Got him. Eli holds on at second base. 
on that plate, sent it all the way over to third to cover the plate, and uh, Fingers had to come in to the plate if anything could happen right there. Maxwell was also running towards third, so there's a lot of guys running all over the plate. Now the Tigers have two shots to knock in another run. Here is Willie Horton. Sacrifice by Freehand. The Tigers had already hit in the two double plays today, and they didn't want another one. So they went to the box, stopping the A's failed to execute, and it cost them dearly in two rallies in the first and second inning. Fingers pitch to Horton, low and outside of all. The A's won the first game against Mickey Lolich in Oakland. In the last of the 11th with an incredible rally. They beat Woody Flyman the next day and came in here, two wins and no losses. Here's the pitch, fastball fouled off. At these playoffs, though you have a two to nothing lead in games and need only one more, it is not easy to beat a team like Detroit three games in a row. One out of three here to keep them from winning three in a row. They have been a very fine ball club at home this year. And they've got their best pitchers ready to go in the next two games if the A's don't win this one. Fingers to Horton. Foul ball upstairs. Big thing in our favor, we won four games and lost two, and we certainly have got a ball club that's proven themselves on the road, so we, we still are out of this ball game yet. I, I got a feeling if we can get, this, get out of this thing, we got a good shot. Big things, you can hold them to the two runs they now have. He's haven't been shut out all that much this year, but Coleman's one of the guys who's done it. Willie Horton at the plate with Al Keyline at second and one away. out right here. Fingers can get it. One and two count. Here's the pitch. Side on curveball. He's struck him out swinging. Harden hasn't handled that one in the whole series. Horton couldn't hit fingers with a broom. He just throw that break of ball away from him any time and he's dead sidearm. He definitely can't hit that sidearm delivery. Got on him. Struck him out with the same kind of a pitch the other day in a critical situation in Oakland. Then out Mickey Stanley who lined out to right field in the second inning and in what looked to be a mighty big out in the fourth inning rally. Bases loaded one out. He had a fly ball to shallow center field, and Keyline held on at third base. But Kenny Holtzman couldn't get the next guy, Ike Brown, in the Tigers' lead here, two to nothing. Stanley hits a smash on the ground. Kubiak dies, knocks it down. Uh, he can't throw the ball. He had him, but he couldn't throw the ball. Stanley is safe with Keyline going to third. A fantastic diving grab by Ted Kubiak going to his left, but he couldn't get a grip on the ball to throw it. A great play by Kubiak. I thought he was hurt for a moment the way he uh, hit his chest on the ground, but he just couldn't get out of his glove. They're going to pinch hit for Ike Brown with Norm Cash right here. Now what Billy Martin is trying to do here, I would imagine, is maybe get Raleigh's fingers out of the ball game, figuring that they'll bring quite a blue in and won't leave him in very long. And then he would have Cash in the lineup as a left-handed hitter the rest of the ball game. Now let's see how Dick Williams reacts to this move by Billy Martin bringing Norm Cash in to bat for Ike Brown, who's already knocked in two runs in this game. So certainly wait till he's announced. I know that Dick hasn't even made a move. And I don't know what his plans are, but Raleigh certainly with a good sinker will give this guy a fit too because he likes that ball up about belt high. He keeps that ball down and he got a good chance. Boy, I don't know, Joe. They say he's a low ball hitter. It was a low fastball. He hit out of here. In Oakland, off Catfish Center. Here comes Dick Williams to the mound now. Norm Cash coming to the plate. He's one of the all-time home run hitters in Detroit Tiger baseball history. And a home run right here can break it open. They're going to bring in Vida Blue right now. Well, this should tell you the story that Dick Williams wants this one today. He is not worrying about any starting pitcher tomorrow. He's got a guy by the name of Captain Hunter that he'll be coming back with tomorrow if there is a tomorrow. So right here, Martin forces a move to bring in Vida Blue, who hasn't been pitching all that much for the A's. He came on and pitched to one man in the playoffs, and that was a man who putted Norm Cash. In a game over in Oakland. Well, he's not going up there to bat right now. You can bet on that. It's 
like you said before, Monty, uh, Bida has had a pretty good year when you consider when he balls and strikes. He uh, has locked only 45 minutes, struck out 115, so his ratio is in his favor. And uh, Mr. Williams does not hesitate at all in bringing him right now. He feels he can get that ball over. He, he wants him to just throw as hard as he can and throw strikes. Make him beat you with your best pitch. I got one little relief spin up against the California Angels uh, at the end of the season there when they had determined that he was going to the bullpen for the playoffs. He had won only one of his last eight starts as a starter. In his one inning of relief against California, he didn't give up any runs, did give up the one hit. He finished the season with an earned run average of 2.80 and might have won six games for him from this year and lost 10. Far cry from last year's Cy Young Award winning effort. He was the most valuable player in the American League last year. Vida has been out there warming up a while. This has got to be something a little bit, a little bit different. Working out of the bullpen for him. Hamilton's warming up too right now in the bullpen right now. So everybody's getting that chance to throw. Bob Locker and Hamilton. Kenny Olsen has been a very durable pitcher this year be taken out of the fourth inning after he gave up that two out bases loaded hit. And he got out of the next uh, man all right, McCullough, but they pinch it for him. So it was on to the bullpen. All right, Norm Cash is the batter with Al Kaline at third base, Mickey Stanley at first base, and Bita Blue on the mound. Bita's a stretch. Here's the pitch. Crack, and he buried that one in there. Oh, and one to Norm Cash. Bida pitched a total of 151 innings for the A's this year. He struck out 111 batters. Cash cocks the bat. Bida fires a curve there to drive the center field. Reggie Jackson over for it. He's right there, and he's got it in. That's all for the Detroit Tigers rally here in the sixth. So we go to the top half of the seventh inning with a score rating Detroit 2 and Oakland nothing. At Cincinnati, the Pittsburgh Pirates have gone out in the first inning without scoring. Rennie Stennett grounded out. Perez unassisted at first base. Al Oliver fly to Bobby Tolan in center. And Roberto Clemente batting third struck out. So for Pittsburgh in the first inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We can tell you that the Cincinnati Reds have scored one run in the bottom half of the first inning on a throwing error by catcher Manny Sanguian. He tried to head off Johnny Bench, who was trying to steal second, made it. The throw went over the head of the second baseman, sent it into center field. And uh, the man from third, Bobby Tolan, who had gotten the board, we don't know how as yet, but he was at third, he scored. And at the end of one inning of play, it is Cincinnati one, Pittsburgh nothing. We'll have details on the first inning rundown for Cincinnati the next time around. But at the end of one, the Reds lead the Pirates one to nothing at Riverfront Stadium. Joe Coleman, who has handcuffed the Oakland A's with five hits and 11 strikeouts, goes to the top of the seventh inning to pitch the catcher Gene Tennis. Ted Kubiak is scheduled for that second in the inning, and then the pitcher Vida Blue. Norm Cash stays in, play first base for Detroit. Tennis. He is wide to center and walked in the game. Coleman six is outside, ball one. Coleman, a 19-game winner this year. In essence, they were throwing the likes of three 20-game winners at the A's in this playoff. There's a hot smash to the shortstop. Bobbled by McCall, picked up, thrown the first in the dirt, and Cash can handle it, and Tennis goes around first, going to second, but he falls down and goes back to first base. had two chances at that ball. They were both hoppers in the dirt. Gene Tennis fell down rounding first base or he could have made it to second. The throw went all the way to the wall. It's an error on McCollum. So there's a gate open for Oakland and if Kubiak scheduled a bat, we may see a pinch hitter right here. We certainly uh, missed Caballeris, but I would have to tell you right now that Detroit does not have a shortstop. McCollum, who uh, played shortstop early in his career, didn't do it very well because he didn't have a good arm. And I have to see the play right there. He picked that ball up and threw like a second baseman, a sinker. 
Gonzalo Marquez will come on to pinch it for Ted Kubiak. And he was, of course, the hero for the Oakland A's in game number one of these playoffs. The second pinch hitter used by Dick Williams in this spot in the batting order. And the third used overall in the game. Marquez is batting for Kubiak, who went in to play second in the place of Green, who had gone out for pinch hitter Don Lynchers. Mentor took a call third strike as a pinch hitter for Green in the fourth inning. So Gonzalo Marquez, young guy that hit around 400 as a pinch hitter for the A's this year. A line drive hitter, and I don't imagine that he'll be up there taking too many pitches. That is not his nature. Mike Keegan is out on deck, and he would be the batter for Vina Blue. The A's are down by two runs, with a runner on at first and nobody out in the seventh inning. The Tigers' bullpen is not stirring. Coleman picks to Marquez. He takes the curve strike call. Boy, this guy throws sidearm pitches even to the left-hand batter. He's the only pitcher in this league I know who does that. He can dispute the success of a 19-game winner. Here's the pitch. High fly ball, center field. They're going to get him this time. Stanley is under it. He's got it. Now Mike Keegan comes up. Boy, he's got it, I'll tell you. Coleman got out of a big jam in the first inning as he struck out Rudy Jackson and Epstein in a row. After Alou had doubled to start the ball game on the first pitch, Maxville walked. But he struck out Joe Rudy looking, struck out Jackson swinging, struck out Epstein swinging, and the A's had one more good shot at him. He got Jackson and Epstein again with two men on in the third inning. Now you can handle the power, guys. With men on base, you got a great chance to win. Here's Mike Egan. Mike takes the curve down and in ball one. Egan had a super year with the A's, hitting over 330 for the season. And a lot of that was accumulated as a pinch hitter. Egan batting for Vita Blue. So Dick Williams is shooting the works right here. This is the seventh inning of the game. Here's the pitch. Swing a top foul ball. He hit right down off Mike's foot. Egan fouls one right down off his foot. He's had quite a few batters in this series so far. He's in the foot. Tennis got hit the other day, and it really was, uh, I think, a little bit... Harder than this one, now they're going to freeze it. Takes a big swing and he hit right over the top of that pitch. That might have been the fourth ball, and it does fall down to the left hand batter. Detroit leading the A's 2 to nothing, and it's late, folks. It's late in Detroit. Not on the clock, but in the game. Matty Lewis on deck. There's one out and one on. Tennis leads away from first. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to the first baseman. Cash has got it. He's going down to second for the out there. No throw to first. And not a left-handed batter in the A's lineup except Matty Lewis has been able to hit the ball out of the infield on this guy yet. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Oakland A's Arco Radio Network. American Forces Radio in the Canal Zone. This is SCN, 790 and 1420. Here's Matty. He's had two hits in the game. Struck out in the fifth inning after doubling and singling in the first and third. Here's the pitch. Curve low and inside, ball one. Tigers have six hits. They have two runs. The A's have five hits and have not scored. Here's the pitch. Matty hits one to right center field up in the air. They should get to it, I believe. Stanley's over there. He goes off the ball. Keegan is not running hard. He goes to third and he stops there. Keegan wasn't running full blast from first to third. It didn't look like. And when that ball was dropped in center field by Stanley... He stops over there, and now Dick Williams is going to pinch hit for Maxville, the shortstop, I believe. 
He's got Dave Duncan coming out here to pinch hit for Maxville. We were talking earlier in the game when he doubled down that right field line and then bounced another ball down the line. The was playing real close to the line. And that play, he was hit in, in between the outfielders. And Stanley looked twice at K-Line. It was a play that he should have caught very easily, but he was looking for K-Line to catch that ball, but he was too far away from it. They've given him a base hit on it, I believe. Well, that ball should have been caught. Glad it wasn't, but now we've got a, another change. Dick Williams is bringing on right-handed batting Dave Duncan to hit for Maxville. That's going to leave Tim Cullen or Kubiak playing at shortstop. That's Jim B. Kubiak. He's gone. get in a game like this where you have to start going to the bench when you really miss I can't be camping there well, Dave Duncan has hit 19 home runs this year for the A's comes on the bat against a tough side arming right hander I'd like to see Dave right now just try to protect that plate and make, make contact because this guy is awfully tough on right handers a base hit to tie the ball game at 2 nothing Detroit. Duncan has not made an appearance in the series. Coleman will work off the stretch here with Mike Egan at third and Matty Alou at second. Dave looks at the first pitch, swings and misses quick one. Oh, he got a high-hanging curveball right in the wheelhouse right there. Back and John Hiller going to work in the Detroit bullpen now. The A's have had two breaks here in the seventh inning. And you got to capitalize on these kind of breaks if you're going to win ball games. The A's have Egan at third and Alou at second. A one strike pitch to Duncan, swinging strike two. He's just throwing two pitches right in the middle. Dave is jerking his head out of there. He just seemed to be over swinging, and it's understandable because it's tough walking out of that bench being a right-handed hitter and pinch hit. You want to do the job so badly, and right now he's just jerking his head out of there. No balls, two strikes to count on Dave Duncan. Yeah, he's a hit away from tying a big ball game. Coleman takes his catcher off. Takes him off again. That's what he wants. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside. He came out over the top with that one. He's been throwing mostly sidearm to Duncan. Dave has the power to hit one out of this ballpark. Easy. Which would be great. A hit would be super. Extra base hit would be a bonus of any kind. Just to hit the ball somewhere where they ain't. Gets the sign. Runners lead away. Here's the pitch to Duncan. Swing and a roller right down the third base line. It goes foul. Dave just barely ticked that one. Matty Alou had some kind of a day as the leadoff man for the A's today. Two doubles and a single. Something to have been having a day like that behind the Campanera. Might as well not talk about it because it ain't here. Dave Duncan up with a chance for the biggest hit of his major league career. Count of one ball, two strikes. Hegan and Alou on third and second. The Tigers infield is giving Duncan a big hole on the left side. Goldman sets. Here's a pitch. Side on curve. Fouled away by Duncan. the ball and rubs it up again. Moves up to the rubber. He is ready to pitch and here it comes. Curves low and outside. Ball two. It's two balls, two strikes. He doesn't want to lose Duncan here because Joe Rudy is sitting on deck. Two 
Two balls, two strikes, the count with two out and two on. This is a wild here at Tiger Stadium. Now the runner's set. Here's the pitch. Low and outside, ball three. Oh, he is really working carefully today, Duncan. They say he threw 140 pitches in the first six innings of a game against Boston the other day. Big, strong guy. He's made a lot of pitches here this afternoon. This is the top of the seventh inning, and the A's are trailing by two. They've got those two within a single of scoring. At second and third, 3-2 count. Coleman set, here's the pitch. Bouncer foul again. Duncan is really hanging tough in there, keeping that pressure on the pitcher. Boy, Dave uh, took two fastballs. He just came back with a 3-2 and two curveball. <laughs> He's pitching him as tough as you can get pitched. Three balls, two strikes to count. When Coleman throws the fastball today, it's a sneaker. He has got a good one, but he's throwing so many curveballs. Coleman's got a new ball from the umpire, all rubbed up again. He's fixed off the stretch all the time here today with runners in second and third. Drops down to the wave, kicks the leg high, throws a curve, he's struck him out swinging. Today. There's been no question about it. They have just not been able to do anything when they had them. Score is Detroit 2, Oakland nothing. Military members can now provide an automatic survivor income of up to 55% of retired pay to widows and dependent children. The Survivor Benefit Plan, SBP as it's called, also allows persons retired to provide on a voluntary basis the same protection to their families. The program includes members of the reserve components of the Army National Guard and Air National Guard with participation starting at age 60 when retired pay starts. The government pays a substantial part of the cost of the new SBP, making reductions in a retiree's pay smaller for the amount of family protection gained. If you're a career member of the Armed Forces right now, find out about the new benefits available to your family through the Survivor Benefit Plan. It's a way to buy time. Time to get your family off on a good start. Time to finish the job that you may not be able to finish yourself. The Survivor Benefit Plan is another reason why a career in the armed forces is a good deal. Well, Dick Williams has run out of all players just about. He is going to a catcher playing second base. Dean Tennis is in at second base now for the Oakland A's. Duncan stays in the game, behind the plate. Boy, I kind of had a feeling there that Coleman might walk Duncan after that long battle and all the balls that Duncan fouled off. But he just kept on throwing and threw that curveball, and he struck him out on the end. He was down around the knees. And you got to hand it today. He gave him a battle. So I expected to hang a breaking ball in sight, but he didn't come side arm. He kept over the top, and I imagine he's been hounded by his pitching coach, Fowler, to throw that ball uh, only a couple of ways. Instead of trying to throw it all different ways and fool around and flip it, they want him out there throwing hard. He gets into a bad rut once in a while, Coleman of just flipping it and not uh, going with his body and going over the top. So whatever he's done today, he's done it right because he has stranded eight Oakland A's batters and is leading by only two runs. Locker, the super sinker ball of the A's now in the last half of the seventh inning against Dick McCullough. Locker's the fourth pitcher used in this ball game. Here's the pitch to McCullough. He ran up on the ball and took it inside. Ball one. Jim North is going out into the Tiger bullpen area. He'll start loosening up and I'm sure they'll make some changes in their outfield. He'll probably go in for Willie Horton important to get out in front of a guy like Coleman early because you don't really get that many more chances at him. Oh, the A's really had their chance. Here's Locker's 1-0 pitch. McCullough takes a strike. Locker's 1-1 pitch. Bouncing ball right side of the infield. Right at Gene Dennis, he's got it throwing to first for the out. So Dennis right away at second base gets a play. It's an easy one, luckily. Here's 
the pitcher, Joe Coleman, who has struck out 12 Oakland A's batters today. Only Nolan Ryan in this league has struck out more than that in any one game. He handles the A's. Struck out 10 Oakland A's batters in one game earlier this year. The secret of that, of course, is to handle the left-handed fire hitters, Jackson and Epstein, and he's done that. Tim Cullen in the open lineup at shortstop with Gene Tennis at second. The pitch is low and outside to Coleman, ball one. Kenny Holtzman picked four innings today. They got their two runs on just four hits, but he walked one. There's a shot through the middle. Coleman got a base hit. Oh, he's done it all today. Now here is Tony Taylor. the center field and hit into two double plays today. The Tigers came into this game without the guy who's been doing most of their catching Duke spins and without their regular shortstop Eddie Brinkman. So what happens is McCullough, who wouldn't be playing at all, ended up with a hit. Here's the pitch. Low a ball. And Ike Brown, who wouldn't have been in the lineup, even against a right-hand pitcher, because he would have been at first base, Duke Sims. And Brown ends up getting a base hit that knocked in two. So Martin changed up line up here today, has produced. He's a pitch, punished foul down the third base line by Taylor. He wasn't trying for sacrifice, but he was just trying to get on. Score, Detroit 2 and Oakland nothing. Last half of the seventh inning. If the A's don't win here tonight, that means that even if they go to the World Series, they will not be coming back home until after the second game of the series. Here's a pitch to Taylor, and it's outside, ball two. The A's travel plans include coming back to Oakland if they win tonight. But if they don't, then they would stay on the East Coast until after the second game of the World Series hoping that they would win one of the next two games here in Detroit. 2-1 pitch to Taylor, fouled off. That one went right over into the box very near where American League President Joe Cronin has been sitting today. the field out and left. Seventh inning. Taylor bounced one to Pando. It's the top of the eighth coming up and the score is Detroit 2 and Oakland nothing. Tomorrow. In the eighth, Coleman into the motion. Here's the sidearm pitch. 
I just took for granted it was going to be out of play. The Oilers didn't do that here. The reason is that wind is going that way, Jim. And if you hang in there on these double X stadiums like that, a lot of time that wind is really blowing back strong enough to push the ball completely out of the seats back onto the ground. Two strikes on Vando. Rudy let it off for the base hit, but nothing else behind him. It's the foul. A shot right at McCollum. Line drive right up the shortstop to retire the five. No runs, one hit. No errors, one left. We go to the last half of the eighth inning. Detroit leading two to nothing. The Pirates' second inning, Stargell popped up to Cheney, Manny Sanguian fly deep to Tolan in center, and Dave Cash grounded out Cheney to Perez. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. So at the end of an inning and a half, it is still Cincinnati 1, the Pirates nothing. And then in the red second, Menke struck out, Geronimo fly to Oliver, and Cheney lined to Senate. No runs, no hits, no errors. At the end of two, it was still 1 to nothing. In the third inning for the Pirates, Hebner fly to Geronimo. Gene Alley grounded out Cheney to Perez. Doc Ellis, the pitcher, reached first on Cheney's error. He bobbled a ground ball. But Senate then flied out to Tolan to retire the side. No runs, no hits, one error, one left. And in the red third, a non-productive inning also. Grimsley grounded out. Hebner to Stargell. Rose walked. Morgan struck out. And Tolan grounded out. Hebner to Stargell. No runs, no hits, no errors, one left. At the end of third at Riverfront, the Reds won, the Pirates nothing. Well, Bob Locker must uh, hold off the Tigers here in the eighth to give uh, Tennis, Duncan, and probably George Hendrick a shot in the ninth inning. Locker will face Aurelio Rodriguez, who is 0 for 3 on the afternoon. Coming up behind him will be Keyline, and we haven't gotten him out all day. Ball game like this to swing a little bit of the momentum right back over to the Tigers in their home ballpark and the partisan crowd got a lot to do with it. And we are a long way just to be in this World Series. I would presume tomorrow, although Dick Williams has not said so, it will be Catfish Hunter against Mickey Lawley. And they were the duelists in game one. Although Hunter was not around for the decision. Back is up to the bullpen for the Tigers. As Locker ready now to work to Aurelio Rodriguez. Ball game is almost at the two and one half hour mark. Here's Locker's first pitch to the young third baseman, and he pops it in there for a strike. 0 oh, 1. Out in Cincinnati, the Reds have taken a 1 0 lead over Pittsburgh at the end of two innings. And that is uh, Doc Ellis going for the Pirates today. Pitch is foul right at the feet of Duncan. Two quick strikes on Rodriguez. Walker is the fourth pitcher of the afternoon. Dennis uh, Cullen and Locker are the scheduled batters in the ninth inning. Nut Duncan, he's hitting in Maxwell's spot. Struck him out swinging. Mr. Rodriguez will take a quick seat. One out and K-Line will get a great hand. He's had a pair of singles and a walk so far today. I'm like Marty, though. I think the president, although he hasn't done anything, he had one double. The presence of Bill Freehan in this lineup has done more for the Tigers than anything else. They haven't exactly worn out. Oakland pitching, they had one shot, and they uh, capitalized on it. This is Don Lowe, one ball, no strike. The attendance today is 41,156. 41156. Locker comes in, and there's a little bloop out toward left field. Rudy on the move. He got there. Two men out. So, for the first time today, they retire Al Keyline and Freehan, who had one hit, but he got into the fourth inning when they nailed Kenny Holtzman for the two runs on the clutch single by Ike Brown. That came with two men out, and had it not occurred, we might be nothing-nothing right here. 
But we're not. It's the Tigers who are on the comeback trail and on the prowl. Trying to shoot down the A's here in the first game of Detroit. And we've got to play the rest of them here. Walker moves it into free hand. Fly ball, deep left field, way back. Might go. It is home run. Today. Here's a payoff pitch. He walks it. 
Tennis gets the second walk. Now here's Tim Cullen. Well, hang in there. Cullen has had quite a few base hits for the A's this year, not in the playoffs. Then he ended up the season batting over 260 for Oakland. They get on there. Big George Hendrick is left to pinch hit. And he could hit one out and still catch that airplane home. In nine innings, seven times, Oakland has had their leadoff man on. They have not scored. It's when you get the hit that counts. And the Tigers got one with the bases loaded and two down. Back in the fourth inning. And here's the pitch to Cullen. He takes the strike. Goes way up on the bat handle. The pitch to him. Curve outside of ball one and one. Orlin and Hamilton in the bullpen hoping. The A's have got to score three runs or it's all over for today. One one pitch. Cullen bounces one of the shortstops. The call's got it to second one. He won't make a throw to first. Team Tennis rolled him up like a window shade. Gino might be the one that's hurt. He's getting up slowly. He's going to walk away. Boy, did he roll that Taylor up. Let's pause for station identification. This is the Oakland A's Arco Radio Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. At 790 and 1420 in the Canal Zone, this is SCN Radio, an affiliate of the American Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs> in the ball game, George Hendricks, who started the winning rally in one of the games for the Oakland A's the other day against the Tigers. Big right-handed batter with pretty good power. Here's the pitch to him, a curve, he takes it a strike. There's one away in the ninth inning, and the Tigers are within two outs of staying in the playoffs and keeping their World Series hopes alive. And it's not a matter of coming in here and winning three in a row. The Tigers just had to win one game every day. That's the way you got to look at it. Pitch is high inside of all. One ball, one strike count. Coleman pitching to Hendrick, and it's on the way. Curve ball foul off the end of the bat. He was way out in front of that one. It's one ball and two strikes. The incident that happened out in Oakland the last inning the other day when Campanares ended up throwing the bat gave the Tigers sort of a, a new hope, new inspiration, and the fans really fired up here today. Here's a pitch, curve swing inside the ball. Oh. 13 strikeouts for Joe Coleman. Game. Only Nolan Ryan struck out more A's batters in a game than this. He cut down 16 Oakland batters one game. He did it a lot different way. Coleman has done it with finesse. The pitch to Matty, punished foul, and he would have been out if he'd have bought that ball because Rodriguez was coming in. Now, let's see if Matty does what he's done before on occasion. Make that punch like that, foul it off. Get Rodriguez charging and then bunt the ball in the air over his head. He has done that before, and then Dave Duncan would be the next batter if Matty can keep it on. One strike to count on Matty. Here's the pitch. He swings and he misses strike two. They threw that ball by. Coleman spinning a big game for Detroit here today. They had to have it out of him, and they've had it. away now. The fans buzzing. Here's a pitch. Bouncing ball. High third and foul ground. Man, he tried to punch it by the third track and almost got it by. Four times in the ball game. Five times in the game. The A's had a man at the plate with two on and couldn't get the hit. 
Same thing in the first game, really, that the A's won. They had a lot of chances of scoring that one and really weren't hitting the ball. No balls, two strikes, and a lose. One of these fans are alive here in Detroit. They're beginning to stand. Here's the pitch. Manny brings it, misses it all over. Joe Coleman strikes out 14 Oakland A's batters as the Tigers are back in the six of the pennant race. The final score, Detroit 2. Nothing. We'll get right back for a quick wrap up on this ball game, and then we'll be making our switch at the end of this broadcast to the game between the Pirates and the Reds, which is now on the bottom of the fourth inning, and we can bring you up to date as far as the score. It is now Cincinnati three, Pittsburgh nothing. The Pirates have committed three errors in the ball game, and two of them have led to the runs scored by Cincinnati. The fourth one was just scored on a squeeze bunt by Darrell Cheney, and uh, that allowed a second run of the inning. The score will bring you up to date with the details on that. The totals on this ball game is Joe Coleman pitches a real gutsy type baseball game. He's been in trouble throughout most of the afternoon in six of the nine innings he pitched. He had to work uh, with, uh, well, a, a troublesome situation staring him in the face, and he came through with some clutch pitching and some fine support from his teammates. 3, 8, and 1 for Detroit, 0, 7, and 0 for the Oakland A's. Coleman the winner and Holtman the loser. Well, they're roaring for Coleman here in Detroit. He has just beat the Oakland A's by shutout. Something that not a whole lot of pitchers were able to do this year, but this is the guy who was afraid of when we left Oakland. You remember we were talking about it. He has handled Oakland ever since he's been in baseball, and today he did it better than he's ever done it before. He was a stout-hearted pitcher out there this afternoon, and he's got to be a, a real tired, tired pitcher tonight. But he pitched a whale of a ball game, and you've got to give him credit. And you just can't uh, have as many missed opportunities as Oakland did this afternoon with a total of three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten men left on base. And in seven of the nine innings, getting the leadoff batter on, and it was the middle of the batting order that hurt today. The ability of Coleman to handle Jackson, Epstein, and Sal Bando that just hurt us time and again. But tomorrow is another day, and we'll put it on the shoulders of the big guy from North Carolina, Captain Hunter, against Mickey Lawley. Final score again. The Tigers win it 3 to nothing. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast, and we'll join with us on the Arco A's radio network for our next game when the A's play the Tigers tomorrow. Here's time, 10-15.